you can, you, you're stuck once you start scanning. You've got your customers. Like you say, you don't want to give your customers up. They don't want to give you up. So you're stuck. So Managed why, to get why were... at gunpoint at one night out. You got held up at gunpoint? Got held up at gunpoint. It was quite an exciting night out. Tell us more. Cleaning houses after filming crews had been in. I see you mean okay. film sets. Film like, sets. Like, uh, <laughs> it was 1992. It was before OnlyFans. It was... Oh, it was only fans types. Yeah, no, no, it was oh, I was just going to say, it's quite a clean-up job. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was. <laughs> I've been Cami. I've been Iona. And we are both Bed by, by Farmers. Farmers. Hello and welcome to the Fed by Farmers podcast with me, Cami Wilson. And me, Iona Murray. Today we have our first Kiwi. Uh, that is a New Zealand gentleman. Or, could, is a, yeah, you get female Kiwis too, don't you? yeah. Kiwi is a gender neutral term. Oh, don't don't start that now, Naona. I'm so tired, guys. <laughs> Honestly, but I said to Iona, we're, do, we're doing the introduction for this podcast. I've literally just jumped in this evening uh, after a day's lambing, and I thought let's let's rattle out this intro, uh, do about the podcast, do the outro, and go because yeah, uh, it's been a tiring spell. But we're not going to talk about it. We're going to do a quick, very quick. Mm-hmm. After this, we're going to do a very quick ten minute catch up. Catch up. For a, a Friday podcast. So Dan Daniel Wheeler is mm-hmm. this week's star attraction. He has been scanning since time began. And he's going to tell us a bit about that. Scanning sheep, I should say. And he also farms unusual types of sheep mm-hmm. over in New Zealand. It's a very progressive might be a way to describe him. And it's just a great chat. He was over scanning here in the UK. And we, we sat down for a, for a blether. He stayed the night. We had a couple of beers. We went for dinner. Actually, Dan came for dinner with us with Sandy Brock. Oh, nice. Yeah, big chums all together. So nice. uh, it, it was good. Thanks as Where always. Where was Man, but... Yeah, sorry. You must have been busy doing something. Been here working, it, it, maybe. Yeah, there was, there was parcels Stuff to get. Stuff to do, yeah, right. Yeah. Orders. No, that's Speaking true. of orders, do we have some exciting news to share, Iona? It is very exciting. Let's hear it. So I feel honoured to announce that the full Fed by Farmers clothing range is now available in 30 Cars Billington stores across Scotland and the north of England. She nailed that first time. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. Thanks very much to Cars Billington for jumping on board this Fed by Farmers train from the outset. You know, know. from our one of our very first podcasts, we were in touch with the team at Cars about how we could work together and... It's it's now come to fruition. It's taken a while to get everything ready. We have a whole new range. We have quarter zips like Iona's wearing if you're watching on YouTube. We have the new shearing hoodies that are slightly different than normal shearing hoodies. A bit, uh, we've tried a couple of different things, mm-hmm. but they're very popular. Where's the back of mine say? Let me just quickly. Farming every day. Farming every day, which Does is, of course, sense? it says fed by farmers in the back of yours, Iona. Nice. Uh, farming every day. Fed is obviously an acronym for... Farming every day, but it also means fed as in you've just ate. <laughs> <laughs> the, the past tense of feeding. Is that correct? No. Oh. Feeding fed. Yeah. Yeah. To feed. To fed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks for Cars Belly Tech. Guys, if you, if you have a local Cars, drop in. Check the range there if you want to try some things on, get a feel for the stuff, get a mm-hmm. look at it in person. And of course, you save the shipping. You can buy it online from us at fedbyfarmers.co.uk. But of course, there's shipping charges. But if you're local to cars, just stick it in the farm account. Ideal. Get the VAT back easy. <laughs> yeah. Stick it in the farm account is basically like getting things for free. Yeah, like it doesn't count. Yeah, spe- especially if like your mum or dad pay the account. You know, if you're maybe a younger person, yeah. nip in there, throw it in the farm account. <laughs> be fine we've also got to thank our main channel sponsors of course crystal x and animax <gasps> trace sure sorry to interrupt you quickly but have you seen the photos coming through of people with the crystal x flocks that no. put in the pod pod things chat oh like they, they've uh, swapped to crystal x yeah. because yeah, yeah yeah so we're getting great messages from folk and we appreciate it and i have another story in that actually people messaging saying that they're swapping to crystal x because crystal x has backed the podcast that's so nice which is genuinely that means a lot and and Chris Licks are hearing about this as well, so they're obviously delighted. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for supporting us by supporting them. And same goes, actually, I had a, a voice note from mm-hmm. uh, Graham, my Modern. my contact at, uh, at Animax, and they had another big customer in saying that they're swapping to Trace Sure because, uh, they, because of the podcast. That's yeah. mad. I thought, give you guys a go because you're supporting Fed by Farmers. So thanks very That's much so to nice. everybody, and always do tell them that you heard it here, they're, they're really decent. They, they always feed it back to me, even though they know it's driving the price up for next year. Yeah, absolutely. It's bold, it's bold. 
Anyway, that's enough uh, chin wagon from us. We'll get into this because of, yeah. of what to do. Yes, let's, let's go. go. Here's Dan. Daniel Wheeler, how are you, my man? I'm good. Good yourself. Good uh, morning. Good, excited. Yeah, we're on early start yeah. today. Early folk, shift. Folk, w- <laughs> folk won't be able to tell because it's always just the same lighting and y- there's no windows to the outside world. Bags under my eyes. Yeah, I have them too because I had an, we had an unaccustomed, well, Dan's probably accustomed to having yeah. a beer, but <gasps> it, it was certainly new for me to have a beer Did last you have night, a beer so. last night? Yeah, I'm feeling quite rough today. How actually. many? Three. <gasps> and a, an old-fashioned. Oh, Yes, and an nice. old-fashioned, yeah. The old cocktail? Are good, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, in a nice. little glass with an orange peel. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh, whiskey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whiskey and say, uh, whiskey syrup and bitters. It's yeah. Quite, it was quite yeah, strong. It's good. Yeah, Dan yeah. had one as well, yeah. I think. Yeah, but you've probably had one before, eh? Yeah. Because but you yeah. are quite old fashioned. <laughs> Speaking of old, Dan, <laughs> tell us a bit about uh, who you are. And what do you do? Dan Wheeler, New Zealand, born, raised. Uh, probably most well known for sheep scanning, been scanning for 34 years, 32 years. So that's the, the short version. Been coming to Scotland now for twenty four years, twenty six years, okay. actually to Scotland. Yeah. So yeah. what? Where in New Zealand are you from? I'm from just north of Christchurch in the South Island. Right. So I grew up. I grew up in a small town there, and then moved slightly further north seven years ago. Bought a small farm. So. What do you farm there? Uh, ling cows, so keeping it Scottish and. Couple of hundred ewes based on fins, so we run seventy fin ewes and then some fin cross ewes, fin texel mostly. Yeah, and the, the, all all performance recorded. Yeah, these these fin ewes, they're uh, for anyone who doesn't. Well, mm. my thoughts on fin ewes. When I think of a fin ewe, I just instantly think lots of lambs. Yep, is that lots about of right? Lambs, lots of lambs. Yeah. So What's the other perks of a fin ewe? Uh, no prolapses, no no twin lamb disease. Why not? They but, just don't. But, but they don't um, have them, yeah. Like, I wouldn't say prolapses. Well, don't have them, but they, they very rarely have them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I would say like prolapses and probably twin lamb disease are a combination of management. Well, they are, it is management most often. It, it, it is, but they don't get them, even if you manage them badly. So okay. we'll get them in. We've got tex- a few texels as well. We can get them in our texels, but not in our fins. Bearing in mind, the fins are stacked with lambs. Well, yeah. that's a big factor, yeah. and they still don't succumb to twin yep. lamb and prolapse. Yep. Yeah, I see. I mean, you, yep. yeah, if you're going for a big, but I mean, like, well, blackies you don't get a lot of lambs as such, mm. but you really get a prolapse in a blackie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. well, the, the lamb outside. So, but yours lamb outside as well. Yeah, eh? we lamb outside. I always yeah. find twin lambs a bigger s- issue for us here when people put the sheep inside and they haven't yeah. quite got what the nutrition right. What is twin right lamb here. disease? I don't... It's basically... It's basically, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's basically the, the biggest thing that brings it on here is a sudden change in diet. Yep. Right, okay. Yep. Um, and all of a sudden the lambs are sucking out more than... They start burning fat for energy and the, and the byproduct of burning fat is glycogen, which is poisonous. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Which is also what gives okay. you a hangover. There you go. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. Keto- no, ketones. Ketone bodies, not glycogen. So that's what gives you a hangover. Right, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, there's yep. a scientific, say for twin yeah, lamb, yeah. but yeah, the, the biggest factor that brings it on, mm-hmm. generally speaking here, is, yeah, a, lack, a, of, a, lack of energy. A sudden change in diet. Okay. So, like, if you bring ewes into the shed that aren't used to, you know, a, a prime example is a couple of years ago, just to make life easier, we tried to bring our cheviots into the shed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they hadn't previously been eaters. So we tried to get them eaten a couple of days before. Some of them did yeah. eat, some of them didn't. And then they come in, you think you're okay. First two days, it's like, oh, we're getting away with this. Mm-hmm. And then boom, like the third go. day, yeah. six, seven sheep down. Then every time you really? get one up, and oh yeah, it was a, like mm-hmm. out back like out the shed as fast as we could. Um, and that's yeah, a big sudden change of diet. So anyone thinking about putting sheep in, I mean, this will be out mid-April, so most people are well into the lambing and be too late for them now. But yeah, yeah get next, year. <laughs> yeah. next year. If, if yeah, if you have a problem mm-hmm. with sheep going off their legs uh, with twin lamb, Look at the diet situation. Yep. Quite a, a, an effective thing is a can of Red Bull. Yes. Yep. For the sheep? Yeah. Or the good old fashioned yep. uh, high sugar Lucas. High sugar. Yep. Stop yep. it. Uh, you yep. shake, shake all the, as much of the fizz out mm. as you can. You know, it's just like, about getting any energy into them until yeah. they get up again. Yeah. Really? And a painkiller because their joints get really sore. So give them a painkiller so they'll stand up. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, well, calcium. Calcium as well. Mm. Uh, calcium is the sort of yeah. go-to straight, straight away. You give them some calcium and, and uh, a can of Red Bull. A can of Red Bull. <laughs> can of Red Bull. Well, own brand. Red Bull's mm. far too oh, expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like yeah. for us here, it'd be Blue Charge. Maybe do you have New some own brand? V. 
V. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Yeah. So I don't yeah. bloody Red Bull. Yeah. Right, so I've got a Formula One driver to pay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so more than one Formula One driver. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So that's uh, yeah. Fin Sheep. Fin Sheep. Yeah. So the the biggest thing is the extra lambs. Yeah. And a short tail. Um, so you add you add a bit of fin to your flock to boost lamb numbers, without the side effects of that come with extra lambs. But by the sounds of it, you have a lot of fin. Are, are there pure fin? We've got seventy pure. There's two hundred and between 200 and 250 ewes in any given year, which are high numbers at the moment, but there's about 70 fins, and the rest are, the rest are range from half fin to half texel through to, to pure texel. There's a few pure texels, and then we've got a shedding flock as well based on fin texels with a little bit of dorper thrown in. It's very so, progressive. Yeah, uh, I had them t- for 25 years. Tim White would love you, I think. Yeah, I'd chat to Tim a wee bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Get ready for a successful turnout and choose Crystalix this grazing season. Spring grass is typically fast growing and lush. However, it can contain high levels of potassium, which reduces magnesium availability. Crystalix cattle HiMag incorporates multiple magnesium sources and is proven through trials at Glasgow University to help maintain normal blood magnesium levels. With 35% sugar and a unique blend of vitamins, minerals and trace elements, Crystalix Cattle High Mag supports optimal performance at turnout. And of course, uh, Dan and I, well, we know each other, I suppose, more through Ryan McLean, uh, Helen Scannon, yeah. really, than anything yeah. else, but also have a link with Michael Blanche. Yes, yeah. Because um, uh, yeah. one year you couldn't go over with COVID, I scan, yeah. Yeah, I scan yeah. Michael's sheep. Um, yep. so I'm going to got a message off you one day, just a bit out of the blue. If you need sheep, if you can't get over and you need sheep scan, give us a shout. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And and, and it worked well, and I got to yep. see different parts of the country. And Michael Blanche has a podcast as well, Iona. Yep. Yes, oh, yeah. I know. Oh, spoke you know, yeah, yeah, of course, of yeah. course, we spoke about. I, him. I'm obsessed right now. Uh, he's, With he's, it. he's funny. It's like so I was funny. Last, I, I I subscribed to his Patreon, mm. and I was listening to his. Uh, I don't. Sorry, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Too <laughs> tight. I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> to, to, never mind, nothing like helping a friend out. He's, he's, he's rich sheep scanners. Uh, we'll go into that. Yeah. But yeah, he was doing one uh, terrible jokes again that um, are hilarious because they're terrible. terrible. Yeah. And he pretends to be the wee dog telling it. Yep. So he gets away with the bad jokes because he's just blaming the, the dog. dog. <laughs> I've not got to the ones yeah. when he does the dog impression. Oh, it's good. It's yeah. good. I'll send you a couple yeah. of clips. And his songs. Love his songs. I love, but, it. I love yeah. his songs. He was literally saying on the, so he called it the wee pod, I think, uh, like a wee kind of review mm. of February. Yep. And he was literally saying he has an interview podcast like this. Yep. Done and dusted, <laughs> ready to go out, but he can't put it out because he hasn't thought up a theme song yet. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to see him tomorrow. So Could you imagine right. if we had to do a different theme song for every episode? Oh my God. We'd never get any of them out. No. Yeah. Um, so well, you've got to see him tomorrow? Going to see him tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, said day. Tell, yeah, tomorrow, said day. Tell him to get tomorrow. down here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Michael's a, a link in the Pasha pod. I do encourage anyone to check it out. Like it is, it's Probably my favourite farming podcast. The, the editorial support crew is number one. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah keeping them right. Yeah. Some man, so you'll not yeah. step out of line here then. Yeah. But I suppose you should talk about the scanning side of things. You should, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How did how did you get into scanning? 30 odd years you've been scanning. Day, you must have been one of the first. Day drinking. <laughs> day drinking, <laughs> Expensive uh, bar bills. Yeah. I, was in, uh, I was in London doing my OE, or gap year, as you would call it here. Okay. Uh, working mean overseas experience. Overseas experience. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So Kiwis do it as a passage of right two years. So working as a cleaner in London, which was really exciting. Uh, we'd done a night shift cleaning, finished work at half past ten, decided to go have a few beers at eleven o'clock. In the morning. In the morning. And got off at the wrong tube stop and walked past a job agency and went, oh, I probably should get a farming job and walked in the door and he said, Oh, we've got this job in Scotland working for a sheep scanner. Are you interested? So that was Two o'clock one afternoon at five thirty the next morning I was on a bus for Scotland. No way. I worked for Owen Wright. That is season. Two weeks later I'd ordered a scanner and the OE was cut short and headed home. It was that, literally like that. That is quite yeah. a story. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Cleaning in London. Cleaning in London, cleaning film sets, yeah. Film sets from houses. Oh, yeah, yeah, so oh, the, the uh, cleaning houses after uh, filming crews had been in. I see you mean okay. film sets. Film like, sets. Like, uh, <laughs> it was 1992, it was before any fans. It was. Oh, it, it was wasn't only fans types. Yeah, no, no, it was I was going to say, it's quite a clean up job. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was. <laughs> <laughs> nobody thinks, you, you know, when folk enjoy these movies, nobody thinks about the poor the guy like Dan yeah, yeah. that has yeah. to come in. Uh, I bet you had your beard tied up back I then. I was too young to grow a beard then. Hey, you really started from the bottom. Yeah. So, what age were you then? 22. And what was yeah. the setup back home? What was your situation back home? Were you I born? I just, just finished university, 
So what? effectively, of no fixed abode. I'd finished university and been living at my mother's. Mm-hmm. Uh, my father had recently passed away, and just just even going to the UK was a bit spur of the moment. It was like I'd finished university in the November, and it what was Christmas time, and I was kind of like, I really need to travel, and it was a week before Christmas. It's like I'm going to go in January, and I went two weeks later with no plan. Got off the plane in Heathrow with nowhere to stay. <laughs> my my uh, stepbrother, then stepbrother, was living in London, so I, I rang him from the airport and said, um, have you got somewhere to stay? <laughs> I slept on his floor for a week. Yeah. yeah. So So um, what had you studied at university? Agriculture. agriculture. And were you, agriculture, do you yeah. have farming background? My grandfather was a dairy farmer, got a farm, an uncle that's a farmer. Right. Uh, Dad was a builder, um, mum worked in retail. So, but yeah, still closely linked to farming. Yeah, yeah you have that yep. link. Yeah. But I yep. suppose New Zealand, like Scotland, you know, Scotland is quite a link to, f- you know, there's usually... No, maybe that's unfair to say, actually. No, I suppose there isn't. I think that because my whole mm. life is a farming community, but yeah. actually there probably yeah. isn't that much of a yeah. link to farming. Yeah. It was yeah. close links then. And, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you came up where in Scotland Did you was bigger. the first job? Broughton, to be exact. So just outside of Bigger. Right. So worked there. First day, yeah, we arrived late at night. First day scanning. We left at half past five in the morning, got home at one the next morning. That was my first day scanning. Oh, my God. On the spray can, dotting sheep. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Just shadowing. Yeah, just shadowing. And yeah. this would be, back then, what was the scanners like? It was this, uh, we were still using the old VET scans, the suit, big suitcase. Okay. Yeah. But you were yeah. standing, you were scanning them standing up? Standing up in a, in a stand-up crate, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So, and, and which what, would have been, I, I think back then that the guys that were scanning were really experienced, but mm-hmm. they'd actually only been scanning for eight years. I think Owen had been going for six they seemed really experienced at the time, but in hindsight, they weren't. Yeah, yeah. Even I suppose not. And, yeah. and scanning back, th- so when you got into it with Owen, mm. then and is this Short's dad? Short's dad. Short's yep. dad. Yep. You got into it with Owen. He he would have been one of the first to actually start scanning. I take it he would have been really early on. Yep. Who were the yep. first people to start scanning? There's, there's some, uh, I Tim see there's, some, there's sometimes a debate on there. Yeah, there's, yeah, a, there's a bit of a debate. There's a forum on the there's like a scanners page on Facebook. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes. Uh, John Urquhart would have been one of the first, inside the first 20, Owen, Tim Wilkinson. Um, Andrew, Mc, Andrew Arachi, McGilvery's. Andrew Mc, McGilvery's would have been there or thereabouts, probably the next wave that came through. Um, there were two women started then whose name have slipped me. Uh, North, Sam North's mum. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, she would have been one of the early ones. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, so my it, original probe is probe number 230. And okay. my current, when I've still got it, so I've still got it, it still works. I've kept it. Um, and my current probe was probe number 2,900 and something. Right, okay. Yeah. I don't even know probes had numbers. Yeah, got serial no, so numbers what does on that? Them. A serial number. So there. that oh. is, I've ever been. So probe one was one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was the first one. Okay. That yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, um, so yeah, 230 was my. Was my first probe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how long were you, did you stay on in Scotland at that point? Just till, I was home by April. So my two years became two and a half months. So yeah. what, what made you go home to do it rather than stay here and scan? Oh, I suppose scanning would so be finished. Seasonal, yeah. yeah of course. The scanning was finished <laughs> yeah. here. And went yeah. home. I came out to New Zealand in the May and we we just went for it. We started advertising, did a mail drop. So the first mail drop we did, we just printed off some fold-out flyers and just did a mail block drop. And within a week, we had 350,000 sheep booked in. Like, it was just madness. Yeah. So like, what, what, pre- no cell phones. It was all landline phone numbers and faxes. Yep. Um, remember fax machines? No. No. <laughs> 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 to be fair, I barely remember yeah. fax machines. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, I've still got one customer who uses a fax machine. No way. Mm. <laughs> Not for you though. It comes through via email. It's peculiar, but it's oh. a fax. It's a faxed page that comes in when you send them something that comes out on a fax. Yeah. Um, so I bet you just in the house he's just like send it with the fax machine. Dan Dan tells her, do we still use the yeah, fax? Yeah, do it for it's a like, laugh. Aye, it's a laugh. Aye. Aye. They just have it for you. <laughs> I've, I've He'll mention got, it on the podcast. I've still got customers with no email and no cell phone, and and, and you find it really peculiar. I went to book at a hotel the other day, and you have to book online, and and I said I've got customers with no email and no cell phone. How would they do it? Yeah, so they just they, yeah they just don't like we have to. I'd guess, mail out invoices I'd and guess, mail out things. I guess those people don't stay away at hotels very often. No, they don't. No. Uh, you know, it's these kind of things. When you, if you are going to travel a bit and do yeah. that, you probably start finding yourself a, a phone. Yeah. yeah. Um, island but, people are, are, you know, generally not too fussed. There's a lot of them not fussed about mobile phones no. because service is so bad. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's got much better with EE out in the islands now, though. 
you're finding that. So yep. you talk about you, you know obviously you're. 350,000 there in New Zealand. We didn't get the most scanned, of course, but we, oh, but yeah, we, yeah, we, had, to, we had to say no to lots of them. See, when but, you're saying we who, were you Oh, that was I and I. Right. Okay. And I'm very inclined to use we when I mean I as well. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, no, that's okay. But yeah, so how, how many sheep are you scanning a year now? Let's um, I'm scanning just under 200,000 at home and about 60,000 in Scotland. So, yeah. so quite a million We're trying to sit around the quarter million market, sitting just under the quarter. Since COVID, it's dropped off a wee bit to just under the quarter million. So, and and yep. what money's in scanning in New Zealand? Good enough. Yeah. yeah. What's, so what's, we, what's we start at uh, start at 75 cents. So it's similar. We go up to... Is that 50? Pe- 50, uh, no, it's less. So it's 50, 50. A two to one exchange rate, so about 37 and a half. Pence? Pence, okay. yeah. And then we go up to a uh, dollar... 20 for my most expensive scan. So we've got a range of scanning prices because we do more than just singles, twins, dries. Yeah, you'll share. We do, we do, we do shedding. We do uh, fetal age. So we do uh, DNA fetal age when we're aging into weekly groups. We do a bit, bit of EID work. So, so, what, so what's DNA fetal age? So our DNA flocks will be pedigree flocks that do all the parentage through DNA recording rather than tagging right, at birth. Okay. So they need to know when the lambs are going to be born so they can get accurate weaning. Oh, okay. I mean, to, to get accurate weaning data, you need to know how old the lamb is. So we right, okay. we fetal age them at scanning okay. so we know what week the lambs are going to be born. So most of the big ram breeding flocks in New Zealand will be DNA parentage. Right, okay. So, is that ever done here? Yeah, there's a few flocks to it. The Xlana flocks are DNA now, I think. Um, so there's not a lot, but there okay. are a few. Yeah, Xlana, um, who is, I mentioned Tim mm-hmm. earlier, X, Xlana would be... Everything's recorded as far as yeah they record listen, everything. Listen yeah. to Tim, yeah, it's like yeah. A, everything's recorded, yeah. and and it is interesting. There's people, um, as Tim will know fine well, there's people who think it's great, and there's people who think it's a bit crazy, yeah. but it's they still listen. It's, yeah. You know, it's still interesting. I still yeah, find so, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, you know, I I'm on the fence with it. Yeah. You know, I'll be quite honest. Like I think some of the things are great, mm-hmm. some of the things aren't, aren't yeah. for me, but I th- I still think there's things to learn from people. Uh, trying different things. Yeah. Like, well, like we, we try to measure as much as we can on our sheep. So um, trying to record low input sheep. I have discovered that recording low input sheep is really high input. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, for, for me, it's, yeah, it's the amount of work that's involved yeah. in yeah. sheep. But I get that, you know, as as, as say, it has set up as if you're trying to be the, the guy producing the, the rams. Mm. You have to. Do it. Y- you have to be yeah. high input and high work rate to create a sheep that's low work. Yeah. Yep. You know, so that you can then sell that low work sheep to farmers who want it to, want it to be to low work. Yep. And yeah. they rely on you. They pay you the premium mm. because you do all the, the hard work. Yeah. So, you know, you know focal joker, these are meant to be easy care sheep, but type sheep. Yeah. But it's all we spend un- ho- unbelievable. We Every individual dung samples. Yeah. Like, like scooping. That. That's the, one of my first jobs when I get home. You do that as well? Yeah. 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 That's incredible. Well, that, that's I, I hate dagging sheep. It's just, I just hate dagging sheep. So we select heavily against eggs, but to select heavy against eggs, we have to make our sheep daggy. So I then have to manage sheep to make sure they get a high worm burden, put them on lush feed so they get as many dags as they can to record it. So I go back around full circle and finish up dagging sheep. <laughs> Just because because I've made them daggy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that, so you cannot dag sheep. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's why some people look at these systems and think, I'm not sure these guys quite get it. Yeah. You know, and that, that is, you know. So worm, worm's example, we're feet counting lambs at the moment, doing every two weeks we're taking a sample of lambs, but we're trying to get a worm burden high. And at the moment we're struggling to get it high enough mm. so that we can do an individual count on the ram lambs and put some pressure on you lambs as well. So, yeah. so we, why, do, but, why, why don't you um, just manage them the way you want to manage them and enjoy your life? <laughs> Oh, I enjoy doing it. To be honest, yeah. like, I <laughs> That's love, the reality. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love that the is the reality. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and like a lot of these guys that do this uh, intensive performance recording, yeah, actually, it. they absolutely love yeah. it. They're yeah. like numbers freaks. Yeah. And yeah it's yeah. like we're doing it for the greater good, but yeah. secretly, they love it. Love it. Yeah. 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 It's like, their thing. Well, it's like Blackie. You know, you think, oh, it's crazy the amount of time they put in effort they put into doing sh- showing sheep mm, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It's I, like, they love it. Yeah. you know, oh, it's good uh, shop window and all that stuff. It's like, you love it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> you love the crack. You oh, yeah. love the socialising. Yeah. Like Highland Show, oh, it's a lot of effort. This shop yeah. window, good yeah. to show your stocks. Like you love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get you get you a weekend wristband, and you can get pissed of it all weekend. It's great. Um, so uh, that will that'll be Sunday afternoon's job before I fly. We'll be I'll be sitting down with spreadsheets on new numbers, starting to work through mating groups. Just uh, they'll be. I think my spreadsheet on the user is fifty columns wide. So oh yeah. my god, is that right? Yeah, that, we, go, we don't we don't hit the. 
We you, don't hit the BA column on the on the, but we're certainly into the A, the two letter <laughs> columns on Excel. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like? Have you been to Iceland? No, you'd love it. Yeah. Why are they big into oh, recording? They have sheets, just like yeah. everything from the length of the from the foot to the knee, like they measure yeah. things like from the foot because it's to do with how good they are on the hill and uh, brilliant various yeah. things like that. You know, if they start getting too long in the leg, they're not suitable mm -hmm. for the hill. Or I thought I was made measuring tail length. But. They, they, yeah. uh, they probably do they that probably as well. Do, I mean, yeah. the thing is just uh, everything, you know, whether it has a black mark on it mm. um, in terms of the wool yeah. uh, quality and things like that, like mm -hmm. everything is recorded. And the reason, and I, I stand by this every time I'm on the, mentioning sheep on the podcast, best sheep I've ever seen. Really? Are the Icelandic sheep, 100%. Mm. 100%. 25 or 30 years of performance recording. Yep. Tight flocks, you know, I've, I've said, if they've got 600 sheep, they scan it about 200%. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. hill, hill breed oh asses like Beltex on them, what a carcass, and they're, uh, you know, lambs killing out at 22 kilos plus off the hill in the summer. It's just That's incredible. Yeah. No concentrate feed. No. Like, but don't be wrong, their silage, their haylage is, is powerful because so it's yeah. all volcanic, you know, yeah. there's, yeah. there's no yeah. cobalt. Quality stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's no cobalt deficiencies there. Yeah. Uh, incredibly powerful stuff. But just through that performance recording and small, so the 600 sheep, say, in a flock, and let's say, let's say they have a, be fair to say they're going to have 200 females, 250 yep. females, if, if we do it in a kind of 50-50 yeah. split. But they might only be keeping 80 of those yep. as replacements. So every year, they're just keeping their one third, one third. best, oh, so yeah. best yeah. females yeah. 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 for 25 years. Yep. Yeah. And now what you're left with is every sheep's identical. And, and and unbelievably good. So it's it's, yeah. it's interesting. Like, see, just as a wee um, side note, when you were saying about knees, there, what would see on the sheep's back legs? Would you call them knees? Hawks. Hawks. Okay, there is a name for them. The yeah. same, oh, like an elbow, yeah. more of an elbow than a knee. Uh, yeah, the, I, I always think of it more like hawk. an Achilles heel. It's the hawk is the heel on a person. Yeah, right. It's more okay. like an Achilles heel because if yeah. you think when you feel that wee tendon, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like it feels like your Achilles heel. Well, yeah. but the same type of band, I would yeah. think. Mm. Yeah, so the sheep. But just there wasn't a sheep called Achilles, so you can't call it an Achilles heel. Yeah, yeah true. that makes sense. Doesn't make sense. You know, I don't yeah. know who their heroes were. <laughs> <laughs> um, so two hundred. Uh, let me do some quick maths. Two hundred and fifty thousand at an average of forty pence is a hundred thousand pounds for your your winter scanning. Must be yeah. Some and what do prices compare in the UK to New Zealand for scanning? So we, a bit the same, but in pence instead of oh, seeds. Right, okay, yeah, so pretty much. No, I so it's like yeah, um, so we seventy seven. pence instead of seventy cents. Yeah, yeah. I just wondered though if we the UK was more expensive. It is, yeah, it is. Yeah, twice. Yeah, so we're seventy seventy five p in the UK and seventy five cents oh, in New Zealand. Oh, okay, right. So be there. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. but we 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 basically did twice the numbers in New Zealand. So it's yeah, do twice as many in a day, yeah. twice as many in an hour. So the, the mobs. Yeah, yeah, the the scanning prices vary quite a bit across the UK, depending mm. where you are. Do they? Yeah, yeah. that's quite yeah. a bit of difference. Well what, what do you charge? Well I'm fifty five for anything sort of local. Right, it's, okay. Uh, if it's a big drive or whatever, it'd be sixty five. Yeah. Um, or a bit of an effort to get it'd be sixty five. But then it's like, again like everybody up north is seventy. Yeah. 70, 75. Yeah, that's just what it is, yeah. On the islands we're more because we've got a ferry riding. Yeah, islands. Yeah, of up. course. Yeah. To well, it, yeah. The island guys appreciate it so because mm. like it is, like we, I've done a lot in Aaron this year and of the, I think I've been maybe six times, four of the times mm. there's been cancelled boats. Like yeah. the, the Aaron yeah. thing, like folk hear it in the news and think, you know, every, maybe every second month they put a bit in the news about it but folk don't actually realise mm -hmm. How bad it is! Yeah. Did you like maybe say every for day they're cancelling. Oh, yeah, it's Aaron. terrible. Oh, Aaron's an island off the west coast, just off Ayrshire, but they're uh, having real issues just now because they were promised this big boat. And if you're from out with the UK, there's a big scandal about the Scottish government wanted a Scottish company to build it. But actually, what they're forgetting is uh, British people are pretty useless at engineering these days because we've stopped doing it for years. Yeah. Mm. So they're trying to bring back an old um, skill that we were yeah. amazing at, but. But now, lost, yeah. now, and what's happened is since that big error and it cost three times as much as it was supposed to cost and it's delayed by years, um, so that they're now running this old scrapper of a boat that's yep. like hand He's breaking down. It's like hand, there's a guy pedaling the bloody thing <laughs> uh, and then when he gets tired, they have to stop the boats. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's a lot of upset about it. It's been a real knock on the Scottish government along with other things that they've, they've been up to. 
But one big issue that's really embarrassing them is um, they, they, Turkey. Mm. They, they got a Turkish company to make two other boats. And I think they asked them, now, this isn't factual here and here, it's rough, roughly what happened. That's good, that's near enough. Yeah, if you say it, if you say it with confidence, yep. it's facts. facts yep. uh, they, they basically, they, they ordered two other boats, slightly smaller, albeit they are slightly smaller, from a Turkish company about two or three <laughs> years after they ordered this one, and it's ready. They're ready, ready to before it, yep. ready to rock, no yep. hassles. Right. A fraction of the price. Actually, I was going to say they were cheaper too. Absolutely, wages in Turkey are yeah. averaging about five hundred pounds a month. Yeah. Like that's the problem with trying to build stuff here. You know, the wages are too. Wages. Expensive. It's yeah. great. Keep it great. Keeping. Well, I hope, hope the new boats go to US. It'll make life getting on and off US a lot easier. Is US a nightmare as well? And yeah, I was lucky this year, but last year was delayed going on, then delayed again coming off. Yeah. So, so where and what islands do you go to when you? Sky, US, Barra, Mull. I love Barra. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, all the US. There's a large number of islands in the US group, mm. in Bicular and yeah. South US, North US. And do you? Um, how did you make links with all these people to get the jobs? So I started. I came back in. Uh, I came in '98 and worked in England, and then came up to Scotland to see Owen. Right. Visit Owen and did a few scanning jobs when I was up here, and then it was another Kiwi, Greg Ramsey, coming out scanning, and then in the next year he said he didn't want to come out anymore. So in 2000. I came out and took over the Scottish oh, work perfect. that he'd been doing for Owen. So Owen gave me, effectively gave Greg and I the, the far-flung stuff, so Sky. And, mm-hmm. um, so I started doing that, and then um, the person that was scanning on Uist stopped due to foot and mouth in 2001. Mm. So I went up to Uist in 2002 because they they were still in England and couldn't leave because we were still foot and mouth in England. So that's how I got the Uist contact, oh. and then I've just been going ever since. Met John Urquhart. In 2003, John gave me a ring and said, can you come and scan a few sheep to help him out? And Still scanning lots of sheep for him. He's now retired, still stay there. And Ryan, we mentioned before, his son-in-law has taken over John's run. Mm. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what are, um, what's it like for scanners in the UK and New Zealand? Like, are, people, are the people short for scanners? Or are there, like, is there plenty of jobs? No, I don't think there's, there's probably about the right number, I think. Yeah. Um, we're probably heavy on scanners locally. There's nine of us just close to each other. We all get on mm. really well, but I certainly wouldn't like to see anyone else into the district. Mm-hmm. Um, the northwest, where where I'm based, there's there's not that many scanners, or there's a few young ones coming. And there's a lot down you here, mean, isn't it? You there? mean in Scotland? Yeah, northwest of Scotland. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're talking the niners in New Zealand. Nines in New Zealand, yeah. Just, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's getting more and more popular. Mm. Is it? Yeah. Yep. So, and it's it's uh, yeah. I'd say there's quite a lot of yep. scanners about just yep. now. Yep. It's. So, uh, I've, we've discussed it before. Yeah. It's such a big move from people. Like, if you don't have someone to shadow, or mm-hmm. you know, like Dan yep. Samurai Ryan there, he had sheep mm-hmm. from John to take on, and, yep. and Simon got uh, yep, Bedwell, Simon who does a lot up there yep. as well, got yep. a lot from John too. I think yep. to get a start going. So, um, if you don't have somebody like that to kick start you, mm-hmm. it's yeah. a it can it's be hard, hard just starting. Well, it's yeah. the money. Yeah. It's the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if, what, what is a skill? Maybe no better than me. What is a scanner and a probe now? Someone, well, told, someone was, told me 18,000. Yeah, well, someone, I thought it was 11 and a half, but it's oh, actually no, it's, more than that. It's gone up again. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think mine was 11 and a half. Yeah. Or just, un, mine was about yeah. 10 something. Yeah. But plus I, fat, yeah. Plus fat. Plus fat, yeah. Um, so no, it's definitely gone. And ironically, yeah. they never went up in price for 40 years. Right. From, really? from the early 80s to, to the late 2000s or up until pre-COVID, they were pretty much the same price. Really? Because yeah, as technology lowered the cost of production yeah yeah it's technology mm. gets better it's because yeah. the scanner that we use to scan sheep wouldn't have changed for what no. tw- 20 years 50 years 40 years but that hasn't really changed the, that the, the, scan six the probe hasn't really changed in 40 years right yeah the 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 box the module has we've got um but even that module that we're using you know and and scan changed. sheep and or scans cattle um will be fairly familiar with the little blue yeah, box, little but blue box, it's yeah. probably been like that for 20 years. Yeah, it probably has been, yeah. I've had four, this is my fourth scanner. So the first two lasted, yeah, 11 years each, so, yeah. Um, it's, and uh, I've only got my fourth one because the last one got stolen. <gasps> Did it? So, yeah. Hard thing, it's a hard thing to sell on at the pub. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And do you want a really <laughs> TV? <laughs> <laughs> Shows good pictures of clouds. <laughs> yeah. It's the very first games console. Yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. One of these really old because yeah. it, it, 
you know, when folk, when you tell people the price of it, they can never believe it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because it looks old fashioned. Yeah. It, like, yeah, you yeah. expect something like sleek. Cameron yeah, if you're if you're watching the YouTube, we'll put it up on the screen. Covered in mud. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah, mine, yeah exactly. Yeah. Mine's is always shockingly covered in yeah. mud. Um, How but, was it stolen? Uh, it was being sent over here for scanning. It was in the wee, freighter's warehouse. Someone broke into the warehouse. Oh, you'd be well covered then. No, freight company wouldn't cover it. <gasps> so. Why? Oh, because you hadn't paid the proper insurance. Oh, they it. claimed that it wasn't insured. It was in storage, not in transit. And so the insurance only oh, covered in transit. Oh, come on. And I dropped it off. It was I being freighted. How that's possible. It was being freighted the day after Boxing Day, so I dropped it off, which was a Wednesday, a uh, Tuesday. So I dropped it off on the Friday beforehand to, to mm-hmm. so that we didn't have to rush in straight after Christmas. And someone broke in Christmas Day. And so needless to say, I use a different freight company now. Mm. Oh, that, they can't. We, that is yeah. so bad. So we did get insurance out of our own insurance company in the end, which okay. was pretty good of them because they could have dug the heels in. Dug the heels in yeah. quite easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so we didn't get the full cover, but we got Christmas Day is a good day to break into things. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean, oh, through a wooden door, skeleton police staff because they're on double time, so yeah. there's less of them in. They're usually usually we have a Christmas lunch. Yeah, yeah. you know, on Christmas Day. You know. That's the thing that a lot of people are in. Are in their houses. Yeah, well, the businesses are all mm-hmm. shut. And, you know, well, interestingly, and... the police never attended. Well, so there was actually no. There was a police report put in, but no one actually went ever ever went there even afterwards. Well, it's just they'd be gone, just, they'd be gone before we got there. Dan. A, yeah. What's the point? You know, yeah. we've we'll just I've <laughs> literally just made our turkey crown here. Like, yeah. come on, man. Do you know it's what like, I mean? It's all right for you sitting at home with your yeah. family having Christmas. Are we not allowed yeah. to do it on yeah. double time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So needless to say, I went and bought some smart tags, and I've got smart tags stuck to everything there. Oh, do you? Yeah. So the what's Apple that? Thing? You can, like, track uh, them? Yeah, Samsung smart tag. So like an ear, po- ear tag. I think Apple's an ear tag, is it? Yeah. tag, yeah. I think yeah. so, yeah. So, so then you can track it on your phone? You can track it on my phone, yeah. So it so was one in my scanner and one in my practical yards and one in my scanning trailer and one in my suitcase. And, yeah, just scattered everywhere. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. And, and it works? Works, yeah. When when the scanner came over, I was able to have a quick look and see track it. Because it just has to be near other people with a phone. Yes. Yep, yeah. Which is almost everyone. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's quite interesting. Just yeah. you could be, be doing with one of those just for everything you own. Put it on your key tag because <laughs> I keep losing things. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I should have one of my keys. I only have yeah. one. Do you know one amazing story? Tell me. I only have one key for that truck of mine. Ever since I got it, mm-hmm. it only came with one key, and I've never lost it. Just because you've only got one. Although, do you know what he did do? I was here no, one. No, but I was, like, I'm terrible with things yeah. like that. Mm. I've only got one key for the hire pickup, and I have lost that. <laughs> oh, there you go. Castle oh. Grant, I all know this one, yeah. Had a few bevies one night, and I had to get up scanning the next morning early and couldn't find my keys, so. But you did find them. I did find them, but only after I'd woken everyone up to get them to help me look for them. Oh, yeah, <laughs> stressful. They were in my suitcase where I'd put them safely so I didn't lose them. <laughs> I'm bad for that. <laughs> I'll put these here because it's a sensible place to put yeah. them. Remember they're there. Yeah. yeah. And then you forget. <laughs> <laughs> Back into my wee dream world and I forgot where I put them. Yeah. Especially um, now with keyless pickups. And you go to find them and like, where is it? Yeah. Where are my pickups? Is my keys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we did. Have, we had to pay a valet. A valet? Valet? Va- valeting. Do you know that's funny? That's a word I can't, I always get mixed up what with as well. As? I would say valet, but I would have said valeting as well. So I don't know. I'd I failed. Say... I failed English at school, so English is my second language, and I don't have a first one. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably similar for myself. Yeah. I often yeah. say English is my second, but I only went to private school, so she should know. Yeah. I think I, I would. I dare say they have a valet <laughs> at Wellington. What's the, what's the plural of, plural of Guinness? Uh, Guinnesses Gana. or Ganai? Ganai. Ganai. Mm. Oh, I Ganai pigs. So <laughs> at Wellington at your private school, they would have a valet. <coughs> or did you have to park your own car? No, I had to park your own car. Oh, d- you did? Yeah. It's not that? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Not that posh. No. It's a working yeah. class private <laughs> school. Yeah. It's an Ayrshire private school. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. But no, val- I would say valet. I val- think I would say valet, and I, but I would feel like a dick. Oh, I, 100%. Mm. That's maybe why I'm saying valet, because I don't Be want... Be valet, yeah. But, yeah, but, but, but I would have said valet. But a valet yeah. is, is someone a who parks your car. Yeah, to same, me, spelt the same though, so it's the same thing. But so yeah, in a va- a valet, you're is, going for it. You get a car. It a your clean car valeted. I'm getting my car valeted. I'm going for a valet. Mm. You would no, s- I think it is a valet, isn't it? Yeah. I wish it wasn't. It's good we get into the serious topics here. That's one <laughs> thing you know. Scots or slang? Fe- I know, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it even English? <laughs> <laughs> is it <laughs> even English? <laughs> French. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, be French. It must yeah. be French. Yeah. Yeah. Must be French. French Philly. Have all the Philly. Words. Like why? Like I, I'd say fillet. Oh, like fillet. For, like a fish. Yeah, I'd say fillet. Well, like uh, like or fillet, meat. fillet of beef. Mm. Yeah, but I think it's fillet, is it not? It's worth more when it's fillet. 
<laughs> put a little, a little accent <laughs> on the E and then add 20 Put an extra price on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so you've wrapped up your, your 60,000 sheep. You're finished for finished the year now. Season, yeah. you're, you're getting ready to head home. Yeah. How long are you going to keep this up for? Till I retire. Which is? I don't know, 70. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to do 10 million sheep. Or um, yeah. Seven. Seven, just over seven. So that is an that is an insane number when you think about it, isn't it? It's a lot of sheep. Seven lot of sheep, million yeah. sheep. Yeah. And it snuck up well, it didn't sneak up on me. I I've kept pretty accurate records. Of course you and, have. And, and, and as I've got <laughs> older, I've got that. really got a spreadsheet. Pedant, really <laughs> pedant, <laughs> I have. Yeah. Got a spreadsheet with <laughs> scanning at least. And I've got really pedantic. I want to know the sheep down to the last one. Yeah, yeah. So um so I knew I yeah, I knew the sheep that was seven million. So well you were, did a, I said up. I worked at it and I was looking through the list one day and I'm like I'm going to scan seven million sheep this week, mm -hmm. so I was able to, to to work out where I was going to be, and and then I was keep okay. track through the day. So that when she came through the crate, we got a photo. Well, it was in you did an article for a New Zealand magazine or yep. something, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I saw that in, on your Facebook. Yeah, so seven million sheep. Mm -hmm. What have you done with all the money? Spent it on your farm block you've bought. Oh, and just spent it. Built a new house years ago and lived in it for ten months and sold it for less than the mortgage. <laughs> good move. Yeah. Good move. Yeah. Smart. So, yeah, yeah. This is what happens when money's so easy got. Yeah. 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 You don't yeah. appreciate it. You buy fin sheep and yeah. you know bad decisions yeah. in between twenties and thirties. <laughs> <laughs> you can be reckless because you can just scan more sheep. It'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. I, I and to, it's a common story. I was talking to one of the local scanners last year and he's been scanning eight years and he's done the same thing. He's like just poor business planning. Yeah. Um and you, and you, it just goes. And you just wake up one day and realise you haven't got it. And it's but, gone. But I think that's okay if you've had a nice time. Yes. Yeah. You've got you a plan. I, mean? I just think people are so, oh, we need to think about the future. Think about the future. I think that's yeah, yeah. okay. That's because you're so young. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's because you're so young. See, once your knees stop working properly and all yeah. that, and you've got a hernia and your, <laughs> your right shoulder's getting a, uh, painful when you shear yeah. and when you scan, yeah. you mm. start thinking to yourself, where am I going to be in 20 years? Yep. Yeah. yeah. You, start, you know what I mean? You start yeah. thinking, I need some other, I need to start a podcast for some passive income. <laughs> yep. Where you can and, just sit and not move. <laughs> and on that note, let's have a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Smith. That was good, too. Good one. Most foragers don't supply sheep and cattle with enough cobalt, copper, iodine, and selenium, critical to digestion, immunity, reproduction, and growth. When it comes to supplementation, there's a danger of under or oversupply. But when bolusing with Animax Traceshow, you can be sure every animal has enough for up to six months in one single application. Animax, giving what it takes. Have you done any other travelling? Yes, scanned in Mexico. <gasps> Did you? Yeah. Whereabouts in Mexico? Uh, at Lacamalco, which is an hour and a half east of Mexico City. Did you go to Mexico City? Yes. I so yeah. want to go to Mexico yeah. City. I didn't travel in Mexico City, to be fair. I just went to Mexico City. Okay. Mexico Airport's awesome because all the hotels are in the airport. Like, in the airport. Oh, ideal. So, I arrived at midnight and... Is that because if walked, you go outside the airport, you get shot? Or run over. They were, that, was a good, that was a good one while I was there. They, were, they had trouble with carjackings at red lights. That was a massive problem. Basically, people on scooters would pull up, point a gun through the window make your hand out your wallet and fail at phone and whatever, and then drive off on the motorbike. And it was becoming a real problem. And oh, then God. the week I was there, it happened. And someone on the other side of Toyota Land Cruiser was driving too. Toyota Land Cruiser saw it happen, so he just roared across the intersection and ran these two boys down on the bike. <gasps> just flattened them. Well, and, the, and the police came and arrested him, and there was a big public outcry about it. And then the next day, it happened again, and someone ran the motorbike down. And then all of a sudden, four or five times a day, there were these motorbikes getting run down by cars. Just realised that's how to stop and, it. And the yeah. car dragging stopped. Like it. Because the, the people actually got turned against them. Yeah. 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 And it just stopped, just like that. And it was this all happened in a week while I was there. Wow. Yeah. So. Unbelievable the power Dan has. Like, but the you power know what? To change I think like somebody called with... Dan Wheeler has that power. No. Don't Wheeler, you think? I, think I just think it sounds like a powerful name. Yeah. Do you think so? Dan, yeah. Dan Wheeler. Dan know? Wheeler. Dan the Scan Man. Dan the Scan Man. I mean, that doesn't yeah. sound. Is that your business name? No, no that's, that's my Twitter handle. But, yeah, oh, the Twitter but, handle. Yeah, it's what I'm, I'm often called Dan the Scan or Dan the Scan Man. So there's we, lots of. We get a bit of mention about Twitter here. Um, like, I, I'm too young for Twitter. So yeah. uh, I'm recent to Twitter. I don't go on it that often. It's X now. X now, X, of course, yeah. yeah but yeah. who was it was talking about Twitter? Oh, uh, uh, Rob Atkinson was talking that he'd mm. got a lot of arable blocks for store lambs. 
using yep, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, and so there must be a big farming community on Twitter. There is, yeah, yeah. Seems to be quite serious talks, politics and farming. Seems to be Twitter. Oh, is yep. it quite yep. probably like what the old the farming forum? Yeah, we have a British yep. or a Scottish farming forum. forum yeah, British yeah, farming forum. Yeah, yeah, it can get quite deep and quite. And intense. there's now that farming forum. Yeah, it can get. Pretty good, yeah. Oh, that's the UK one. It's called the, the, the Farming Forum. The Farming Forum. I've been on it. Like yeah. I, I have been on it at, yeah. at certain points. Um, mm. I mean, there's one on Facebook called the British Farming Forum. Yeah, that was the old one. So there was the British Farming Forum, and then it it struggled a bit, and the Farming Forum started, and the British Farming Forum died off, but it kept going on Facebook. Yeah, it's so, like yeah. pretty yeah. low level stuff on that yeah. Facebook gets, one. Like just me, yeah. the yeah. Farming Forum's good. It gets pretty heated. Yeah, but yeah. Like, I suppose at least the good thing with the farming forum, you have to make a bit of effort to log in. Yes. So it gives yeah. you it gives you time to realise that you're talking and everyone before you get yeah. before you get there. Yeah. Whereas Facebook's too easy. Too easy, yeah. You just have yeah. these idiots posting absolute bloody nonsense. Yeah. And then even worse idiots in the comments giving them answers. Yes. Yeah. You know, or someone yeah. asks a really decent, genuine question and the stupid answers you get. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. unbelievable. The, the worst ones when folk ask for like medical advice. Oh yeah. For Bring stock. Your Phone the Bring bloody Kaz's phone numbers on the internet. That's right. Yeah, Bring <laughs> uh, yeah. but that is yeah. one that winds me up. Like you're asking a bunch of, uh, like, and and the only people who think they know they know everything are generally yep. idiots. Yep. Do, do you know what yep. I mean? A little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. Yes, yep. exactly. Yep. Uh, so like you read all, uh, there's ten different. The poor guys get ten different solutions. Oh no, it's this. Do this. Yeah. It's yep. this. Like like I was saying, bloody give them a can of Red Bull. The vet will be like, don't talk nonsense. Yeah. yeah. You know, you come and buy the, uh, which is good stuff. The, yeah. the vets will do a good concoction of, uh, and I should actually say that, don't be. I do that, but we also do buy at lamentime Time the the glucose yep. mix that the vet makes the proper one. That's a last resort if you're out and about, and it's just, it's you usually easier. On a Sunday, because everything goes wrong on a Sunday. It's usually easier yeah. to nip to a shop than it is to nip to the vets. Yeah. You know, it, and it's time critical, these situations. So that, I should have explained that more for yeah. sure. I'm, yeah. Don't don't be bloody pouring Red Bull down every every sheep. Pour Blue Charge instead, it's cheaper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or V. Or, v, yeah. or, or yeah. V, yeah. But sorry, I interrupted your Mexico. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so Mexico, so in New Zealand exported 45,000 in lamb sheep to Mexico, so they had to be scanned over there. So yeah, actually, John Urquhart went and scanned them the first time once they arrived, and then there was fifteen thousand empties which they remated. So I got to go back and rescan them. So that, that was great, except that my scanner got lost in transit, mm. and so I finished up scanning them with a with a peculiar wee Chinese made scanner. It was really hard. It's just really in lamb or not yeah. in lamb. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. that was great. So had a really good time. So Managed why to get why were at gunpoint at one night out? You got held up at gunpoint? Got held up at gunpoint. It was quite an exciting night out. Tell so. us more. Involved drinking again. Yeah. Tequila this time. It's all about bloody. Yeah, we were just out for a night out for uh, for Halloween, whatever the, the Mexicans call it, Day of the Dead. Oh, were you dressed I've up? I've been held up at gunpoint on a, a night out in <laughs> before, I like this. It's not that exciting, Dan. <laughs> Did that have a wee orange tip on it? Yeah. <laughs> I've got no idea. Yeah. That's usually how you can that tell. Was exciting, <laughs> so, so no, we was five of us out drinking and then yeah, just out in the local park, sitting drinking, and got held up at gunpoint. Well, I actually, so I really didn't know I'll what honest, was going on. I wouldn't sit drinking in a local park in Scotland. Uh, yeah. Never, never, never mind in Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so the best bit was I, I don't speak Spanish, so I had no real idea what was going on. The 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 only words I remember saying was one of the boys said to me, he said, um, we're being robbed. Um yeah, being robbed, get down on your knees, don't let them know you're a gringo. That was all I could remember them saying. Yeah. Really? So pretty tough. Yeah. Tough to hide it, was it not? Oh no, but no you'd, just have your, you'd, just, have your, you'd have your screen mask on at the time. Yeah, no, had, well, had, had, we all had the heads down there. Yeah. So. <laughs> You had your green face paint on, you were the Hulk yeah. that night, yeah, so it was fine. Hulk, yeah. like, yeah. Hey, S.A., S.A., <laughs> hey. <laughs> so it was over and done pretty quick, but yeah. So, and did, so. what, did, they, did they take your wallet and stuff? No, I was really lucky. They missed my wallet. I had two phones. I always travel away from a New Zealand phone and then a phone for whatever country I'm in. And So they took one phone and missed my wallet, but they, they took everything else, the vehicle keys, everyone else's wallets and phones. Um, mm. So and they, then you've got to try and make contact with someone. So, Absolutely. and of course, the police in Mexico are reasonably corrupt, so you don't ring the police. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, See, I so. love that. I wish we had that uh, kind of attitude in Scotland. Yeah. What? Like, oh, don't ring the police. Like, yeah. They'll not bother. Like, we so rang. Folk phone the police about everything here. Yeah, we <laughs> rang one of the boys' uncles, whose best friend was the police chief, so we rang the uncle and he rang the police chief. And 
Yeah. Uh, that would help. Yeah. Uh, there, it's, there's this funny thing, and I think Kevin Bridges or someone does a sketch about it, about how we all just instantly assume all these like European police forces and that. Like, you go to Spain, mm. and you see the cops standing... Like the big burly guys with the yeah. t-shirts, you just think, oh, don't go then, they'll give you a kicking. You don't, yeah. you're still, don't misbehave in front of the police, or oh, if something happens to you, don't tell the police. Like yeah. they, they, they won't care. Whereas, like, I'm standing in Sucky Hall Street in Glasgow, <laughs> folk will come up to you and say, "There's a guy over there, punch me." Yeah. It's like, so what, mate? That's a night out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to hate it. It's like, mate, don't be a grass. <laughs> like, a pun- imagine going up, but imagine that a grown no. man coming up to a police officer, going, "That guy over there, punch me." <laughs> Give it's a tip, like tip telling on your the arm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, mate, it's a night out in Glasgow. <laughs> yeah, like it comes with the territory. Aye, yeah. it's a memory. Like you, yeah. you talk about this, you know, we all get, oh, I get lamp. And most of the time, when folk get a punch in the face, they deserve it. Yep. <laughs> Not all the time. Not all the time. I hasten to add, yeah. mm-hmm. but usually, mm. and you know, and especially if they're the type of guy that's come whining to me about it, yeah, yeah. they probably did deserve They're it. probably been wanting to do my better. Gobbing off. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're probably yeah. a smart ass. Or something, yep. You know, it's like, you know, you're not going to do anything to me because I'm invincible. Yep. You know, a lot of them have this invincible mentality mm-hmm. uh, when they're out in a night out and then they get a slap for it and then it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> yeah. It's that yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah, that's yeah, uh, I can relate to that. If we, if we I had thumped one night for exactly that. Uh, Did you? Yeah. For thinking you're invincible? Well, I'm just being gobby. Oh, just being gobby. Taking yeah, yeah. the joke too far. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, so, no, that, yeah. That, uh, oh hey, I've had I've had a slap mm. for that before as well. Yeah. Uh, but you just take it as a God, do guys just fight? Oh, that was there was a friend of mine that did oh. that too. It was a good was friend it? that did it. Yeah, is that right? the best bit. The best bit was, was literally as I hit the ground, it was like he was like, "Sorry, bro." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, mate. Let me just put your, put your beard back on. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, oh, that was when I, that was when I was young and fresh faced. I, I was going to say yeah. that's, it's a a teenage. Mm. Maybe early twenties thing. Yeah. Yeah you, yeah. you learn after a few sore faces, you learn just yeah. how to behave a bit better, mm. I think. Yeah. yeah. That's why youngsters act like idiots. Yeah. They still haven't had enough punches in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, that, it's like that great uh, Mike Tyson quote and one I love, and it's a good one oh, for life. It's like, everyone has a plan until they're punched in the face. Yeah. 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 Yep. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. I think that's a good yeah. one. Why? Good I don't get it. Well, it's obviously, it, it, someone asked Mike Tyson in an interview mm. about what you're thinking about his tactics and blah, 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 and this. And he's oh, like, right, so basically. Everybody's got plans until they get punched in the face yeah. Yeah, by okay. Mike Tyson. Yeah, and then all yeah, of a sudden yeah, your yeah, plans yeah, are out yeah, the, okay. Well, everything's yeah. out the window. But it's actually a good analogy for life because, like, everybody's got plans for life. You know, I'm going to uh, run this many sheep and yeah. I'm going to uh, get married and have kids. And yeah. then uh, next thing, you're getting divorced. You, you, yeah. lo- you lose yeah. your job. So it's like everybody's got plans. Until you get hit in the, you know, yeah, the face, no, yeah. I like until, that. Until yeah. something yeah. hits you hard, yeah, and, and yeah. then oh, the plans are out the window. You need to reassess, re, reevaluate, yeah. just survive. When yeah. we got robbed, Mike like, Tyson's coming across the thing. <laughs> when we got robbed in Mexico, like lots of people said to me, "Oh, what did, what didn't you do something? Why didn't you fight back?" And I was like, "To, to be honest, all I did was sit there and think, oh, I really need to pee." It was over and done. There was, there was no plan. Like, I'd be, I'd be like, mate, yeah. can I yeah. vlog this? Just can I vlog this? <laughs> you'd like, you'd like to think you can do something, but there's no time. You don't. And you're no. like, you don't think about anything. And you're a bloody idiot if you fight if you oh, uh, if you yeah. try and do if something got for a weapon. weapon. Yeah. For, for a pickup. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. like there was a there's a video going viral uh, just now of these gangs, I think it'd be London or somewhere. Mm. Uh, they're just waiting for people to come home in the suburbs. Yep. And as they get out of their car, they're just going over with machetes and saying, Give me your keys. Mm. Oh, and, Cammy, don't tell me things like oh, that. It, it is actually the I footage is it's on a guy's like ring camera or whatever. It's yeah. terrifying. Just guys in balaclavas with yep. machetes going, Give me your keys. And, and the guys, of course, and this is like three o'clock now, or well, yeah. it must be like five o'clock. The guys mm-hmm. obviously just come home from work or, or something. And uh, obviously he's like, I take it. But it's like, what what idiot would try and be a hero for mm-hmm. a car? Yeah. You know what I mean? Give mm-hmm. them the bloody car. Mm-hmm. Run them down a Toyota Land Cruiser. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, and hope somebody runs them over. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's like, it's only a car, your insurance mm-hmm. will cover it. Don't worry about it, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah there's, there's, and it, don't get me wrong, you didn't get it very often, but there would be times when I was in the place where people... Like try to be a hero in stupid situations and get themselves badly hurt. Yep. You know, yeah. like if you see someone whose life's in danger or, or is, you know, on the ground and someone's mm-hmm. get involved, mm-hmm. absolutely get involved. Mm-hmm. But like, don't if you see somebody with a knife, uh, like don't be going up to them. Like leave no, them if nobody's in danger. Yep. Basically, if nobody's in danger, don't get bloody involved. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's so many times so people try to be heroes. Or they, or they watch too many, they see too many good news stories on the news and think yeah. that could be me. Of the 1%. Mm. That, that it's a successful yeah. hero yep. mission. Yep. You think, well, yeah. that could be me. And the next thing they're stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, guys, come on. 
pick your moments. Um, but yeah, so right, you've blown all the money you've made from scanning yep. on, on various ventures. You're going to work to your 70, which is the big thing with scanning. You know, unlike shearing, I've mm. said this before, mm. loads of opportunity. Yep. But there's not as much opportunity. And guys like yourself that have been at it for years have a lot of jobs locked up. Yep. Maybe more so even the Scottish guys that have the real cream jobs, the big hill blocks yep, and stuff. Blocks, like yep. the last thing they give up mm. are those. Yep. Cre- yeah. The waste, the waste and oils. Yeah. They yep. the, the really love love being out there in the waste. Yeah. And the Western Isles. Yep. What's your favourite? Oh, my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but one island must be a. Oh, look, they're all different. Mull's probably my favourite. I've been to Mull on, twice on holiday. Is it your yeah. favourite? Yeah. Probably is. We've been, yeah. Right, that's ridiculous that I've not Sorry. been. Yeah, no, I've not I took Donna to Mull for a 50th. Oh, there we go. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just, yeah, something about Mull. But I love, look, I spend nine days a year on Ewist and probably 14 days a year on Sky. So Sky's almost a second home for me. Yeah. yeah. Sky's um, handy as well because yep. it's not really an island anymore because they put a bridge to it. Yeah, put mm-hmm. a bridge to it, yeah. Yeah, but, so you, but, it's good. You never need to worry about getting stuck. No, no. no but, 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 yeah, I'm up, up on Sky all the time and got really good friends up there and... Yeah, good friends. Well, good friends everywhere. You know what it's like scanning. You make good friends. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. and I suppose a good one would be like young people get into scanning. Yeah. What advice would you give to them? Don't get in too young. It's been been. I got in young. A couple of us got in fairly young, but I think you've got to get grounded. You've got to be based somewhere. You've got to. Um, you can, you you're stuck once you start scanning. You've got your customers. Like you say, you don't want to give mm-hmm. your customers up. They don't want to give you up. So you're stuck. Mm-hmm. So you've got to got to know where you're at, where you're gonna live, where you're gonna stay. Um, so yeah, mid twenties is plenty early enough. Or, or once you've got a business, there's a couple of young boys, Ryan and Stu Robson. Like mm-hmm. they started young, but they already had a sharing business. So, they but, but the big thing for for them as an example is okay. Ryan's it fell across. It was never intended. It's a father in law type yep. thing. So it's yep. it's the way it's went. But for you, Stuart, who's a young lad that a lot of yeah. people know as well, as an example, it's like, scanning's great, yeah. but he's obviously started quite young. Now he, that screws up his plans to go to New Zealand. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, he's, yep. he's farming in a big way yeah. now anyway, yeah. so it doesn't really matter, but yeah. it, that was a factor. Like, once I started scanning, I was it's never going to go to New Zealand. No, for sure. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. at the same Patience time. The season. Yeah. yeah. So it, it... Limits you. That's not okay. Yeah, well, it does yeah. if you have grand ideas. If, yeah. And it is, what we find is it's mostly shearers. That become scanners now. Yep. For, yes, there's a lot. Yeah. Oh, heaps. Yeah. yeah, heaps. And for various reasons. I mean, the big one is probably um, spare cash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Se- the seasons suit. The seasons. In are New perfect. Zealand, the seasons don't suit because they're both the same season. Because we winter shear. Oh, a lot yeah. of winter shearing in New Zealand. Ah, that's interesting. So yep. not a lot of shearers. And a lot of shearers scanning. Okay. So whereas over over here, there are a lot. Yeah, because it, it yep. works. You have to get sorted for summer and winter yeah. weather. Yep. Of, of course, it's great. Uh, but yeah, and and the contacts is the big one. Yeah, shearers have, have the contacts. Yeah, already. contacts. So yeah. yeah, you're yeah. already you're, you're a big yeah. shearing run. You know everybody. Yeah. They, they'll soon find out you're scanning. They know you're a good shearer. It ties in fairly yeah. well, mm-hmm. even though you start off a shite scanner. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, sometimes come, you still have short days. Ah, ah, yeah. hey, have yeah. To, like yeah, yeah, still miss plenty. Like absolutely, yeah. um, and yes, yeah, various factors to that yeah. type of sheep. What stage is that? How full they are. Mm. You, you get it all throughout the season. Yeah, uh, I did some awesome ones the other day. 100 and, 117 days at scanning, tripleted. Miserable. They were brilliant. Clins. Well, they got into them when I scanned the first couple. I was like, oh, this is going to be tough. But uh, that was an absolute dream. It was really good to do them way out of, well, they haven't lambed yet, to be fair, but it was good to scan them w- way out of what we should. Yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and know that you got them. Yeah, it was yeah. clear. A nice yeah, clear picture. Yeah, I think I marked it out of that. 300 sheep, I think I marked 10 as unknowns. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. So you had some other days when yeah, you, you sit there and you think, oh. This is miserable. This is miserable, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, 100%. No, it's been, listen, it's been good to me. It's obviously been good to you. Um, yep, yep. And set you up, and as you say, oh, now, yeah. going to go to your 70. You go to yeah. 70, yeah. As long as good. I keep fit, keep going to the gym. Yes, you, yeah. you, you spoke about that. I put yeah. on a bit of beef. I weighed myself. I'm 92 kilos. The lightweight. 92 kilos. I'm 100. I'm bad with in kilos. Uh, I don't know what that is in stone. 220 pound. 
for mine. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're 220 pounds. Well, that's 800 kilos. Easy to work out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, ah, you put the beef on because you're sitting mm. your ass doing nothing all winter. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Then lambing around the corner. I mean, scanning's a really easy job. It's good though. Uh, get I your... lose weight in the New Zealand season, but I put on weight in the Scottish season. I'm a kilo a week in the Scottish season. But you put on a kilo a week. Yeah, yeah. It is an easy. Yeah. Like physically, it's very easy. That's that's yeah. that's the downside to it. But then you're reserving your energy for lambing. <laughs> yeah, you I, need I, it. I, this mm. is your time. This is my yeah. reserves for lambing. Here. Yeah, you need it. Yeah. yeah, but unfortunately, this year Lizzie isn't uh, like at the coal face as much, and she's an incredible cook. So I'm guessing like we're mm, have unbelievable pat, pat lunches. Yeah, you know? I hear you. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm just leaving this podcast to go a run actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you with me, Dan. Um, but listen, we're, we're on the hour there. Yep. Um, it's, it's been a fantastic chat. Just thank to you very much. Talk about, about your, your background mm -hmm. and uh, these fin sheep and all that interesting yep. stuff. We'll get some shots of them up on the YouTube as well. Yep. Um, because they're different. We don't have they're them here. No. Oh. no. They used to be here. They right. Used okay. to be fin sheep, but they've they've died off. Yeah. 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 Yep. We we saw the light, but you'll get there. <laughs> you'll get there. <laughs> keep, keep working with your spreadsheets. <laughs> Thirty years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New Zealand's behind us in so many things yeah. uh, ahead. One yeah. thing, what about worm burdens? You're the first key we've actually done. We better just cover this quickly. Like what, about, the, what, yeah. about, what about worm resistance in New Zealand? Yeah, it's massive. Triple drench resistance is massive. Uh, I think uh, I think the figure's close to 40% of farms have triple drench resistance, and it's 80% of ram breeding flocks, Jesus, which so is massive. Going so, yep. So we're really aware, and that's why we've suddenly started sleeping heavily for worm resistance and, mm -hmm. and dag resistance. Yeah. Yep. That is always the card when folk, uh, or Kiwis or whatever, try and give yeah. you a hard time about how you farm here. I always say, but what about resistance over yep. there? It's that's like, a big issue. Yeah. You, aren't, you aren't that clever. I always no, say that. No. A lot of the stuff they do yeah. is brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. But that's always my wee card to bring yeah. out. Yeah. It's a worm oh, resistance. It's a big problem here too. Um, yeah. I mean, triple yeah. drench. Oh, but yeah. I, I think we're actually really getting on top. Like we are improving. Yeah. yeah. Like like folk have realised this white wormers. It's just a first dose. Then get away from it. Right. Yeah. You know, don't keep persisting with white wormers. Yeah. Uh, and I think. Credit to Alanco and, and Mordun, mm -hmm. the guys we have here really pushing the information on Facebook yep. and, and doing yeah, ad yeah. campaigns because mm -hmm. knowledge is power. Yep. Like, yep. Um, and, and rather than just listen to your neighbour or posting it in the bloody farming forum and listening to mm -hmm. what folk on there say, actually ask the vet. Yep. Yeah. Do it um, properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, do you worm use in New Zealand? Sometimes, when necessary. We had drench capsules for a long time, which you guys don't have, so 100-day drench capsules, which were widely used pre-lambing. Like a bolus for bolus worms? for worms, yep. Keeps the worms going for 100 days. But, Interesting. Mm, but uh, one of them's just gone off the market so with a few issues, so that's... Well, I heard it was uh, leaching too slow and causing resistance. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, then was too, it was given too small a dose, too so small it was, a dose. It was, and, it was and then making resistance. Was leaching too slow, it wasn't a 100-day dose anymore. It was longer, and so they couldn't... Mm. If they put it in lambs, they couldn't kill lambs because, of course, they were, uh. weren't outside the withholding. Withdrawal, right, yep. okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So that was a big issue here. And, and look, I've used them in the past and they were good, but we've stopped using them. Um, we get more dags on the use at lambing time, but we've got short-tailed sheep that shed their tails and shed their breeches, so they've mm -hmm. got dags at lambing time. By weaning, they're mostly clean again. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, yeah. listen, it's, it's always the one that fascinates folk is, yeah. is the, the way the worm job is mm -hmm. in New Zealand. And the fact, I mean, use are, are, is it Startex, a purple? Yeah, Startex. Yeah. Um, Zolvix. Zolvix, yeah, but you Which guys... You can get, can't get Zolvix at the moment. You can't get Zolvix? It's a real battle. But, yeah. but you guys are putting the two of them together. Oh. Are you putting three drenches together? No, no. So Just purple and orange our triples, together? Our triples are yeah, white, clear, and abermectin. So okay. Levamisol, BZ, and the mectins is our triples. Right. And then Startek and the Zolvix are... The ones that save the day? Yeah, the ones that save the day. And they need right. to be ones that save the day because, man, they're expensive. Yeah, well, that, but, is, but, but, I've just bought five liters of Zolvix, fifteen hundred dollars. But, 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 but twenty, 20 liters of triple combination for six hundred. But but mm. do you know that's mm. that's another issue we need to get our heads around is like Zolvix has to be expensive. Yep, has to be. Or else people will abuse it. Yeah, mm. like white wormer's cheap. Like yep. if anyone buys your wormer based on the price, you're yeah, off yeah, your head. Off your head. Yep. Mm -hmm. you're off your yep. head. Like never even ask the price. You just so get we, you get we the use Zolvix for everything coming home, coming onto the property. Absolutely, yep. so and, rams, and we spoke about that way. Yep. We, we, we Rob, yeah. yep. who buys a lot of store lambs. Every yep. store lamb gets a Zolvix, yep. um, just to just mm -hmm. to keep the job right. And, and uh, we do it the same as well. Mm. Zolvix yeah. everything. We actually Zolvix everything. The Zolvix going to be kept over the, the Zolvix resistance in New Zealand. Is that right? Yeah. So that so when Zolvix came out, um, the first goat herd got Zolvix resistance inside of twelve months. But goats are a nightmare. Goats are a nightmare. Mm. I, and and it was bad practice. He was dosing the goats every month. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. There we go. So like, yeah. And that's where there's argument. Well, like the purple you can only get from the vet. Yeah. Because that's like our last... The strategy. Yeah. Yep. It's like our last uh, defence. Defense, you know, if, yeah. if, if, if we destroy the Zolvix thing by oh, by yep. using it inappropriately, the, at least the vets still have the hold of the one that can save us. Yep. Yeah. And, and it needs to stay that way. Like, because we are our own worst en enemy. Yep. Um, whether it's, I know it's easy for me to say with the Tapari, but like underdosing. Oh, is, underdosing. Well, that's what causes, yeah, that's, that's what causes it. That's yeah. where the resistance comes from. Yeah. Um, so whether it's underdosing. And you, and you, look, people dramatically underestimate the size of the ewes. And I've seen yeah. it. My ewes are relatively small. We average 60 kilos top weight. But my biggest ewes over 90. Yeah. Mm. So if we dose ewes, we got, need to dose to 90. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you go to farms and and they use what average 70, or in some cases 80, yep. their biggest use 120, 130 kilos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big dose. Yeah. Like 130 kilo you if you can, well, she doesn't need dosing to start with. No. no. But if she is dosed, that's two drench guns. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. 30 mils. Well, well that's the thing. Yeah. We, we haven't wormed a year um, yep. since I was, what, 27? So in about six years. Yep. Um, we, we haven't wormed a year. You, and, yep. and we don't need to. Like, you're probably stocking higher than us. Your ewes are yeah. a bit leaner coming into lambing, maybe a higher mm. a higher number of lambs. Um, we've got high worm burden because we're running lambs up high. So last year our ram lambs were 1750 eggs per gram. Well, there so, you go. So it was quite noticeable when in the winter when the ewes went through the paddocks, those lambs had been in, they mm. went down really quick. Yeah, and yeah. the, the, the immune week, system's yeah. a, bit, a bit lower, so yeah. they, they maybe need the boost of it. And, yeah. you know, I do, although I say, you know, we don't want more ewes, some ewes do need a one. Mm. You know, triplet, usually it's your triplet bearing yeah. ewes. If they're starting to lose condition, giving them a worm can just be one yeah. less burden on them because they, they yeah. start to be unable to, to 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 beat the worms, if we like. Um, but, yeah, people, this is where you're a big way, easy way of resistance. You know, any worms mm. that are in these sheep, if you're giving them a wormer, and the amount of people I see, they give the lambs a white wormer. Yep. And then you just give the ewes a double one. No. So they're yeah. just, they're just yeah. throwing one. You ewes don't need... Very, White one for a start, a, a waste of time. A, a ewe flock doesn't need worming. No. Full no. stop. The, um, the odd ewe will. And that's... A, yeah. yeah. It, but that's where, you know, you're worming ewes, underdosing them. Because you're yes, doing yeah. them... And then yeah. any worms that are in them are getting a weak getting dose. A weak, weak, yeah. So yeah. that's why we, we stop. And they like, I don't regret worms. stopping. The last yeah. year was tough when the ewes were... When they took that big worm burden off the pasture from where the lambs had been... They got dirty, they got smelly, mm. they were obviously struggling. But we had a good winter. We we have quite mild winters, so we grow more grass in the winter than we do in the summer. Right. Um, and Just because you have less mouths? You'll, be growing, you'll grow more in the no, summer. We're drier, no, we're drier in the summer, so we've got basically zero growth at the moment. Oh, because it's too yep. dry? We're mm. too dry, and then right. in the winter we're relatively mild, so we'll grow more. So we grow more between tupping and lambing than we do between weaning and tupping. So, so we're feeding at the moment. So we just backed the ewes to, to battle through. And by yeah. lambing time, they'd battled through and come come right. There's a few ewes didn't quite come right, but we've culled them out mm -hmm. and they get through. So. Yeah. But yeah, and it was tough watching pretty dirty ewes walking around, but they were dry by lambing and tail shed and breeches shed over the lambing period. And by weaning, they were mostly clean again. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. So, listen, we've all got, yep. there's a million different ways out there to farm. Yep, it's, it's, farm yep. it, it, yep. it's always interesting to have someone mm. different on the chat. And we're, we're well over our time yeah. there, but uh, it has been fantastic to have been you great. on, Dan. Yep. And, and safe travels. Thank you very much. Back to New I Zealand. I look forward to getting back. I've got 10 hours in Dubai, so I'll get a good sleep on the way through. Sounds good. Yeah. Don't speak to the police there. They're not interested. No, they're not. <laughs> no. They're definitely not. They? <laughs> good man. So, yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thank you very much. And we're done for another week. Thanks very much to Dan. Daniel, Dan the Scan Man for coming in and having a chat with us. He's done a few podcasts actually, a big Michael Blanche fan. Uh, yeah. He heard this talk. Michael is a great podcaster, Pasha Pod. Please do check out his podcast. And Dan has done a podcast with him also, as he mentioned there. I mean, it's just <laughs> taking a massive gulp. A massive. That, no, some people are into that kind of ASMR, just <laughs> you and the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're delirious, we're lack of sleep. <laughs> uh, but listen, we're get, uh, the, my podcast out Friday, we're having a little chat about lambing. We're going to do it now and we'll we'll put it out on Friday. But we, we do need to push on and get that done because I need to get back to uh, top up some lambs before bed. Thanks very much for watching, guys, or listening on the audio. As always, click that subscribe button. Ring the little bell. We get a notification whenever we put a podcast out, although it's every Tuesday at 7 a.m. How good? We've been good at sticking we to are, that. We are very good. I think we're at 22 in a row or something like that. Wow. Well. Yeah, incredible. So thanks very much. We'll see you for the next one. Oh, no, that's not what I say. That's the sheep game I say that. Yeah. I'm vlogging every day. I'm that's losing the plot. That's okay. I've been Cammy. I've been Iona. And we're both Fed, fed by, by Farmers. farmers.